So is it going to be just a flurry from here on in, like Trade Center or whatever? It's going to be just a mess because it yeah, seems much. like everybody wants to jump on everything now, get it out of the way, get it done with, and not wait I, till that. I know your catchphrase on Trade Center Day, bit piece. Oh, I'm going to say it's a bit piece. There's a bit piece trade. Yeah, you never, you never know. And obviously the Leafs got in early on Muzzin. Um, yeah. And uh, lots of teams want to try to get in early, but a lot of teams sometimes are holding. The whole thing got a lot, trade deadline just got a lot more fascinating with this Artemi Panarin news yeah. and Yarmo Kekalainen doing the news conference today, responding to Panarin's agent saying, well, we're not talking contract with anybody until the summer. And if you saw Yarmo's okay, news, go ahead, you're going to lose, guys. If you saw Yarmo's news conference today, um, the exact line was. Uh, uh, I'll have to look it up, but it was uh, we're, we, if we have to make tough decisions for the organization, right. we will make them. And so I immediately thought they're trading them, they're yeah. trading them. And and then somebody else suggested to me, well, you could read that two ways. If we have to make tough decisions, we'll make them. Meaning, you know what? We got to hold on to this guy. And what the reality is is, whatever the offer is, that's what you wait against. Because people are going to say, how can you trade Panarin on? on a team that wants to make the playoffs and try to win some rounds. How could you possibly do that? And then there's going to be other people who say, how could you possibly not do that? So then it comes down to, well, what are you getting offered? If you're not getting right. offered anything, it makes it easy. If you're getting offered something half decent, but why would it make sense for the Boston Bruins or some other team to give up a first-round player, or a, a roster player, or a, or a first-round pick and a prospect, a really good prospect for our Temi Panarin? Um, in order for them to try and make the playoffs, I uh, sorry to make noise in the playoffs. Why would it be any different for Columbus to say, you know what? If we're getting a first round pick and a prospect, why wouldn't we keep them? Yeah, but it's a vicious our cycle, own Bobby, because I've been in a, mar- a small market. Yeah, like you want to get the first round pick, and then who knows? Pierre Luc Dubois might turn into a superstar in a couple of years, and then he's like, I want out of here. I want to go play for the Blackhawks. So it's like, how do you win? Like, you try to develop, you want the young guys, and then they become superstars, and then all of a sudden they yeah. say, you know what? I don't want to yeah. play here. I don't want to be here. Yeah. You have no chance. Yeah, and this is you have pre- zero chance to win. And this is precisely why the Chicago Blackhawks traded Artemi Panarin for Brandon Saad, and people said that's right. a terrible deal. Panarin was right on top of his game. And Saad hasn't played as well as the Hawks would have liked. I think he's been better at times this year than he was last year. Right. But this was what they foresaw, was not being able to re-sign Panarin and him may be walking out and getting nothing for him. But doesn't it sound like, again, I'm just speculating, but to me there, there's there got to be some back channel. Like some like Panarin wants to play somewhere. That's where I, I, I keep oh, coming. Oh, for sure. Like he wants to play in yeah. whatever, New York or Florida, Florida or something. Yeah. One of these places, like it's just a matter of time. He's he's biding his time until he's able to sign a contract with with that organization. Well, and to be fair to him, he hasn't demanded a this trade. Is a, this he's is just said, like, I'm not signing yeah, a contract or talking the, about a contract. But the implication is pretty clear. If he wanted, right. to, if he wanted to stay in Columbus. Yeah. But now, a, he, there is a difference between, like, the biggest story in the NBA right now. Oh, yeah. Is Anthony yeah, yeah. Davis is like publicly, I'm no, out. He's, yeah, I want out. He's, he's doing exactly what he's entitled to do. Right. right. Well, in the NBA, just find Anthony Davis because his agent went public with the trade that. request, 50 grand. Right. Uh, they have it in their CBA that you're not allowed to go public with it, which I don't understand because the insiders are going to get it anyway and it's right. going to get out even if it was private. But how does the NHL feel about this? Uh, you know, leading up to the trade deadline, Bob, their players. You know, being vocal if it gets to that point, publicly requesting. Yeah, you know. I, well, there's uh, to my knowledge, com- there's no there's no rules against it. Right. I mean, bombs away if you think that's going to help you. Sometimes it helps the situation. Sometimes it hurts it. You know. So. Like yeah. I would guess it's in the NBA CBA because of smaller markets like New Orleans right. who are like. Well, this is killing, killing us, man, us, our yeah. fans. But I would think the NHL would be in a similar spot. Like the Blue Jackets are to the NHL what the Pelicans are to the NBA. Like the league's got to be like, oh, man, like this this would really help us. There's nothing and you can do, but it would help us if Bobrovsky and Panarin I was stayed in say, Columbus. They've got it times two. Yeah. You've got one of the best goaltenders on the planet that's ready to walk too, if potentially. Mm-hmm. Now, you may have to make a decision between one of them and say, I'm going to keep one as an own rental and, and dust off the other one and try and maximize my return here. And all along, Columbus is a pretty darn good team. That's the one thing yeah. that's a little... Like, you've got a stud and, 
You've got two studs on the back end, and Wierenski and, and Jones. Right. Yeah. Like, well, and and th- what I've found over the years is things change fast. Life comes at you fast. Yeah. And it's, it's well, almost four, less than four weeks to the trade deadline. In four weeks, a team's fortunes can really skyrocket or they can really tumble. So if you're Columbus and, you, you know, you end up losing 7 to 10 and Torts is losing his mind, it becomes a lot easier to say. Hey, just mail it in. Say, Forget it. Say, yeah. let's – Let's move, move these guys, yeah. both of them, if they – Bobrovsky's got a full no move, so he'd have to play ball on that. Or the flip side of that is you, you win 9 to 10 and you're riding high and you're like, ooh, baby, we're looking good. I'm not, you know, I'm not taking Can't make somebody's first-round pick and a prospect to sacrifice a chance to, to do some damage in the playoffs.